Have you recently purchased a new or used vehicle? Or perhaps you're researching for a new or used vehicle, but you're wondering how to set up and use all the technology that we find in a driver's information system and the infotainment screen. If so, you're at the right place. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do just that. But before I do, take a moment to give us a like and hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Maury's Genesis of St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Welcome to our how-to video on the 2021 Genesis G80. And uh, this has all been redesigned for this year and uh, it's, it's, they've done a really nice job. So on this video, we're gonna go through the driver's information screen and everything that's in there and how to control it and then do the same for the infotainment screen. So to start with, you know, on, on the dashboard, you've got an analog speedometer and fuel gauge and then you have a digital tack on the right and then the middle is your driver's information screen. To control the information that is in there, you're going to use uh, this button up here on the steering wheel and then you're going to use uh, this rotary plus a push OK button uh, right down here. So to start with, this one will bring you to three main pages. The first one is the one you see and that's the driver safety systems. If I give it a push, then I get navigation or a compass if the navigation isn't running. If I push it again, then I get uh, tire pressure, but you can notice the, the dot on the far right and I can scroll through here and get multiple screens. So I'm gonna go back here to driver safety systems and this, this uh, right here, if you press the button here, um, you can, yeah, there's no, oh, you can exit or, or you can have driver assist. So if I click on here, it actually shows up in the infotainment screen. You've got a couple of things here. Uh, you can set the, the your smart cruise control. So you can say, it. do you want it? Right now it's based on the drive mode. So as you switch through the different drive modes, EcoSport and so on, it, it uh, changes. Or you can switch down and you can say, I want it based on driving style. And then you can say, you can actually view an analysis of your driving style. All right, you can say, Okay, I want for driving convenience, I want the highway driving assist on and I want the highway lane change and the highway auto speed change. And you can turn on or off those things there. You can set the warning timings for any sort of a driver assistance. Do you want it normal or do you want it like right before you hit something? Um, you can have change the warning volume and you can change the haptic feedback. And haptic feedback, what that is, is that is a, it's it's a like a click or a buzz on whatever you're touching. So if you're touching a button, it actually physically vibrates. In this case, maybe steering wheel. All right. So uh, it's it's really nice. It it, it sort of really jolts you, and makes you pay attention. So those uh, settings there, and then if I scroll down a little bit. I can change driver attention warning, forward safety active assist, and I can have it as a, you know, it's it's active or it's warning only or it's off. I can do the lane safety. I can do the blind spot safety. And then I can do parking safety. And then I'm at the bottom of my list. So a lot of ways you can uh, configure your driver uh, assistance systems. So I'm going to, uh, click on this button to change the screen. You either get a compass in the screen or if navigation is running, you get your turn by turn directions. One more push and this is our last screen, but there's quite a bit on here. So you got fuel economy and I'm just rotating this knob here. We've got drive info. We have got accumulated trip info. You've got attention level, which is keeping track of how well you're hanging on the steering wheel and how well you're paying attention to the road. If I go down again, I've got tire pressure, which will display when you drive, engine temperature, and then the last one here is to select contents for this whole screen. So if I click here, oops, sorry, I got to push and hold. Okay, so I can add certain things. Like for instance, you can see engine temperature is selected. If I click the wheel, it's unselected and will no longer show up as an option in my screen when I rotate through. So you can take things off. 
Okay, what we're gonna look and see is what is still on here that we could add. Ah, you can have another digital speedometer right in the middle if you'd like. Uh, uh, you can get uh, information since you last refueled. So how many miles have you gone? What's your average miles per gallon and that kind of stuff. And then you've got drive info. Okay, so I'm just going to press that again. That's what you can control in the driver's information screen. So they've made it really easy, really simple, giving you all the basic information right here. And then of course, you know, your, your, term, your driver safety systems and then your uh, navigation or compass. All right, there are a couple of other buttons on the steering wheel that are worth talking about. So the first one up here is your star right here this is your favorites but it can be set to do a number of things so if I click it it shows up in the uh, infotainment screen so I can take and say I want it to do nothing and then I'm gonna use my rotating knob down here I can do it to reject a call change hands-free calling device privacy mode voice memo reroute cancel route all those things so I am going to say I want it to reject or end a call but now if you notice I've also got a mode button down here because these are two separate things so right in this screen I can go ahead I'm going to hit the back button here and hit the mode and now I'm on the mode stream wheel button and I can use that to say turn on Bluetooth audio I can do all these things actually I can set it to do every single one of these things. Uh, so let's just try a couple. Let's do AM, uh, Sirius XM, USB, and phone projection. So I can use the mode button on the stream wheel now and it will go between all the things that I programmed it to do. So customizable favorite button, customizable mode button right here. Now down here you have the home button by Genesis and so the home button is what shows up just above the scroll wheel on the uh, on the center console and I can have it take me to home or or I can say I want it to go directly to a be a map button I don't see the sense in that since you've got a nav button right there but it's there okay that's it for the driver's information screen next we'll move over to the infotainment screen All right, so uh, on the infotainment screen, it is 14.5 inches from left to right. It's about four, four and a half inches tall. Um, it has a 21 speaker Lexicon audio system, which if you're not familiar with Lexicon, it's uh, like a subdivision of Harman Kardon. Uh, there are 21 speakers and 1,050 watts of uh, audio. So really nice system. I listened to it on the way over here and uh, really, really nice. This, the system itself has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Both are a wired one, not a wireless one. And then it has uh, AM and FM radio, HD radio, uh, as Sirius XM and Bluetooth. So the system itself has got, you know, these little cards, I call them cards that stick up. And there are a couple of screens of those. Hey, those are like in the, the apps on your phone. You just click on them and they take you to um, a particular spot. This is like a home screen. You can have it display here um, if you want. It's just kind of a nice quiet screen. All right, so on any one of these, all you do is click to go into it. So we're going to take a look at a couple of these uh, and, and show you what's in them. So for instance, it's interesting. You've got a map button and you've got a navigation menu. So the map button takes you to the map. This is your home button up here. You always click that to go home or you can use the home button down here. If I go into the navigation menu, now I can, I, it takes me right to a spot to do a search, uh, look at my address book, look at POI categories, look at Genesis dealerships. Hey. Uh, and okay, that's it on there and then of course you have traffic events all right so that's kind of the difference between the two so the, the redundant buttons are down here now from the navigation menu you can also select different things now, do you notice how a lot of the buttons disappeared off the screen after a couple seconds it's just to give you a nicer view so if I go down here and I click menu 
Now I can go to destination if I want. And that's that same window we kind of saw before, a search window. You can also add a home address and a work address. And then and now I'm gonna switch down to using the controller. Okay, I can hit, I can tell it to display traffic. I can look at nearby, nearby POIs. I can save a destination. And then I can go into navigation settings and then here I get, you know, some of those things that you do once, uh, once when you buy a car. So if I go, if I go to display, I hit the arrow over, I go to map, and I can click on that, and now I can change the map display, the font size, the map color, and the and the type of POI that that can display on the map. So quite customizable, and that's just the beginning. All right, then you've got uh, on information here, again, I'll click the arrow. I can set the properties of the route guideline. I mean, I can I can show the route colors, uh, traffic colors on the, on the route. I can also um, do a color selection there uh, that just, it won't uh, it activate for me right now. Uh, there we go. The vehicle symbol can be a Genesis copper or a Genesis rust. That's an interesting one. So that's talked about the actual icon that's on your map. And that's you can show vehicle speed, detailed guidance view. I mean, this is where I'm not going to go through all these, but this is where all your stuff is to set your navigation map, how it looks, how what colors are on there, what size it is. All that stuff is under there. So I'm going to go back one, and then of course you can go. That's just display. Now you can go on the guidance, and if I click over here to show guidance distance. Okay, and I click again, I can say interval distance or cu uh, cumulative distance. And again, I would just click on the controller or tap the screen to set it. So you get the idea. I mean, there's just so many things that you can customize in here. But now you know where to go to customize it. Okay, so coming back here, if I click on that menu button one more time, okay, I'm going to scroll down. I can do a display off if I want. If you just tap the screen, it comes back on again. Now, there were a few other things down here. So if I scroll down, you got a web manual, so an online manual, and then you can have the split screen. I can have, um, right now it's on analog clock. You can see that over there. You can have calendar, analog clock. Uh, let's see, we could have a compass, weather, audio source, and map. And, okay, that's just split screen. You can also just flick through these. And in the event that you don't want them at all, you can make your map full screen, which I think is sweet. That's that's quite quite the view. All right, so the, the probably the easiest way to set a destination is either to go into your, your your search, and then you type in an address or the name of a POI or something, but you can also use the voice command. Okay, so I'm gonna use the voice command. Please say a command. Find a gas station. Please say the line number. Two. You will be guided to the second destination on the list. So that's uh, basics on navigation. So let's go back to the home screen. And those, that's the first two. So let's take a look at uh, some of the media. So we'll take a look at Sirius XM. And the, the way the screen's divided up here is you kind of got four screens. You've got your side screen, okay, again, which you can change. And you've got your actual media that's playing. You've got uh, like the actual artist, you've got your channel. So over here is your favorites list. Okay, if you wanna look at the different sources or different bands of radio, you can click on here and go to FM, AM, or Sirius XM. But your favorites on a new on modern cars will show all your favorites, whether they're AM, FM, or Sirius XM. They just put them all together. And if I click on uh, menu, then I can do, I can turn display off again. I can again choose the band. I can choose whether I have HD radio on or off by clicking on it. I can enter a station manually if I want. I can look at a station list. I can scan, I can save as a preset, delete presets. But what I'm getting to down here is sound settings. If 
1050 watts, 21 speakers. It's a great system, and here's where you adjust everything. All right? You can go to system volumes here, and here you can also adjust subsystem volumes. So things like car beeps, ringtones, voice recognition prompts, voice prompts, navigation guidance. You can set all the volume level for all those things right there. Connected devices volumes. When you have something connected to the car, you can adjust those. So just lots of ways to do that through that menu button. Okay, we're gonna let's let's just go back to FM for a minute and show just a couple of basic things. First of all, if you want to tune the radio, you can use the button that's down here on the dashboard and it'll start tuning. It gives you a digital picture. It also gives you a sort of a speedometer looking uh, tuner. Okay? Once you find the station that you like, uh, you can uh, go up here. If you, like to, if you want to make it a favorite, you just click the star and it'll make it a favorite and, it, and then it puts it right in here. So, you know, right down here, um, if I click on the star in the middle, it's the same thing as click on the star down here. Just makes it a favorite. Okay, uh, so that's the basics of, of uh, radio. Uh, if I, there's no media connected right now, that would be like a USB or something. All right, so under HD radio data, so this isn't your radio, this is uh, HD radio data. You can take a look at traffic. You can take a look at Doppler radar, and you can take a look at fuel prices. Okay, under uh, phone here, if I go here, I can check mark hands-free calling or Bluetooth and Bluetooth audio, or I can turn them off. Okay, I want them both on, so I just click OK. So now I take my phone, turn it on, and go to settings, go to Bluetooth, scroll to the bottom. There's G80, so if I clicked on it, yep, I wanna pair that. Okay, uh, okay, there we go. Um, and it asks you if you wanna sync your contacts and, and favorites. The contacts um, download is starting. Some phones were Okay, I cancel it because, of course, it's not my car and I don't want them to do that. So down here would be like your, your favorites. Okay, down here would be uh, contacts. This would be your keypad and then mail. So down up here you see some, it says delete and clear with two fingers and one is to delete. So if I type in some numbers, I say, oh, well, that's not the wrong ones. I just go down here to this uh, trackpad and I swipe and it deletes. Or if I want to do two fingers, It'll clear them all. Okay, so that's your basics of your phone. Okay, Genesis Connected Services is right there. And then if I go to phone projection, okay, um, I have to connect via cable. That would be like your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And chances are once you hook your device up, it wouldn't say phone projection anymore. It would say Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, whichever one you hook to. Okay, um, you let's, let's go to setup for a minute. The setup, there's just a lot of things. So this is where the driver assistance is under vehicle. You remember that screen we had before? Okay, so we're gonna skip that one for now. You can also change the drive mode. So remember we had a custom mode in the, in the drive modes. This is where you get it. So I'm gonna go to custom and I can do, I can set the powertrain to uh, eco comfort sport or smart. I can do steering, I can do suspension, and I can do all-wheel drive. So that is where you customize it. As far as your, your uh, um, the cluster goes, you can change the service interval. Okay, so you can uh, set the distances here and to uh, like oil change interval and that kind of stuff. And go back, you can set the refuel economy after refueling after ignition or off altogether. I can do content selection. So if I go over here, I can do a wiper or license display that will show up in the cluster. I can do traffic signs if I want those, those will display. And then I see road warning. So that's what it looks like. It'll be right between your RPM and speedometer. Right. You got your welcome sound if you want that on. Okay, and then we go back again. 
climate. Okay, on climate, I can uh, look at recirculate air and I can say activate upon washer fluid use. Uh, if I go back, I can do automatic ventilation. So I can auto automatically dehumidify the car and I can do a smart ventilation. And you notice that every time I switch, it gives you a description here of what it's doing. So it takes a little time, but you can read through all those things and figure them out and see if you want them or not. Lots and lots of options. Now, under climate features, I can have indirect uh, ventilation and I can also lock the rear climate controls. And then as far as the touch screen, I can have haptic feedback or not. That's so when I touch the screen, I have a little, it you know gives me a little feel on my finger to know that I touched something. Uh, it's actually kind of a nice, nice feedback. All right. So let's go back again. And I think we were down to climate and we had a few other things. So for instance, on your seats, you can do smart posture care by just clicking on here, entering your like you, you have to enter your your height, uh, your pant inseam length, and your weight. Holy schmoly! And then it gives you a posture analysis, and then it adjusts the seat according to all the information you put in, and then you can save that. All right. If I go here, I can do heater seat balance. So if I again just uh, click over here. Uh, right now, it's set evenly between the back and the cushion, but should you prefer to have more heat on the back or the bottom instead of the cushion, you can adjust that or vice versa. And then if you want to do the passenger seat, just click down and you can adjust that as well. So, I mean, there's so many ways to customize uh, seating easy access. So right now that's turned on. So basically front uh, driver and passenger, when you get in, steering wheel goes forward, back. the seat goes backwards. You step in, close the door, the, the seat goes forward, the, the steering wheel comes back out. So it's making it easy, easier for you to get on, uh, in and out. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, we got lights. Okay, somebody had asked a question before about ambient lights. So if I go over here and I click on ambient lights and I can do brightness or color. So I'm gonna go to color first of all, and these are your selections. You have quite a bit. And you also have a custom color that you can mix. So I'm just gonna do uh, emerald blue, or emerald blue green there. And then I'm gonna go back, and I can, I can say it's dimmed while driving. Uh, I can check mark that or uncheck it. I'm gonna go to brightness for a minute, I'm gonna crank it all the way up. You can set your headlight delay, high beam assist. Uh, you can do your doors right here, the power trunk opening height. You can have your smartphone as a digital key. Uh, on convenience, you can turn the wireless charging system off or on. Rear occupant alert. Um, you can change the time for the auto vehicle shutdown. And then of course you can reset things if you completely mess everything up. So, I mean, just, Oy, oy, oy. tons and tons of things to customize under here um, navigation we already went through that this is just another place to access how you set up your navigation another place to do sound we've seen that before uh, and then you can set up a, a user profile that will adjust things like your seat your steering wheel your climate and your favorites on your media okay now there's just a couple other um, Sounds of nature. That, that's one thing that uh, has been more or less advertised and people have seen it, but this is where you get it. It's really neat with the surround sound how it, it's, it's, it makes you feel like you're sitting in the middle of a rain. And then Snowy Village which I don't need to see. I've seen enough of winter. Okay, let's turn that volume down. Let's go back. 
All right, uh, you do have a valet mode if you want to activate that, and that limits things, you know, like your volume of your stereo and that kind of stuff that you don't want your valet to get into. You do have a separate seat button here, and this adjusts the passenger seat control. So if I go over here, I can adjust the fore aft position if I click on the controller. Now, the weird thing is this. So here I am on the fore and aft position. I can rotate this and go to seat back recline. I can do the custom cushion height and I can do the tilt. However, you can't do it from the controller. So once you get to this point, you actually have to go and click on the buttons on the screen. So, I mean, you, you, you have to control it like that. So in some ways, I wish they would have allowed you to do that from the controller. That would have been really neat. You still have to reach over there. I guess the fact that it's available is easier than getting out of the car and going around it and adjusting the seat from there. Let's take a look at climate here. You have all the buttons down here, but you can do it digitally as well. And now all that's right here. It's a nice picture. It's a nice layout. Genesis has done a nice job with the graphics and the colors. Okay, you also have a uh, manual. So when you do that, you can scan it with your phone if you want, but if I go to the vehicle guide, I can look at vehicle, driving, parking, uh, warning indicators. So if I just wanna go to say vehicle, and I wanna see something about the driver's seat. Okay, then it's gonna show me the different buttons right here. Okay, forward rear adjustment, and it shows me what it does on the seat. Hey, so it's always nice to have a, a digital manual. It's often easier just to watch our videos and we show you how to do it, but <laughs> uh, so, okay. So the last thing I'll, I'll mention is this again, um, this side screen where you can have this, you can have a nice clock, you can have a compass that's on even though your, your navigation isn't. You can have a temperature display, you can have your media, and then you can have navigation. So it's, it's nice that you can uh, split that screen that way. All right. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.